All right, my next exercise will be exercise 51. I'm going to re-sketch this shape, basically. Uh, so I'm going to start, obviously, with using circles. So I'm going to go to the circles tool, and I'm going to type in zero to place my center. And the first circle I want to sketch will be this one with a radius of three units. So I just uh, type in zero to place the first point, right click, and then it's asking me what diameter I want to give. So make sure here you've got radius or diameter. So in this case, it says R3. So basically, it's, that means radius. So I already have three uh, assigned. Uh, if it's not the case, just type three and then right click. And you have your radius of three. Uh, the next one I want to sketch will be another construction. Well, will be a construction line. It's going to be this circle here. And it's a radius of 1.75. So I'm going to go to circle. And I'm going to snap in center with my O snap, or you can type in zero, it's the same. And I'm just going to bring it to its center. And I just need to make sure that this is radius. And I'm going to type 1.75, right click, and there you have it. Okay, so this one will be just a basic construction line. So I can always go into the properties tab and where it says line type under object menu, right? I've got line type here, and I'm just going to select dashed like that. Okay, so I've got this, and then I have to create these grooves. I know I have a circle here, even though it's half a circle here. I need to sketch a circle of a diameter of 0.75. Okay, so I'm going to sketch a line that starts at the center, first of all. So it's again going to be a, to help me position my geometries properly. So I'm just going to use the line tool and the third icon called line from midpoint. I'm going to type it in zero. And I'm going to press shift to lock it along the horizontal left click. And there you have it. And again, I'm going to select this curve in the properties tab where it says line type. I'm just going to switch it to dashed like that. Okay. So if I press F7, there you have it. And I'm going to do the same again, the line tool. I'm going to type in zero, for example, right click. And I'm just going to press shift and lock it along the vertical line. Select that line. And again, I do the same thing select dashed line all right so now i have an intersection point between that circle and that horizontal line and i'm going to sketch at the intersection point a small circle of a diameter of 0.75 so i go to my circle tool and when it says center of a circle i'm just going to select my snapping toolbar make sure that i select intersect and I'm just going to bring my cursor so that it snaps at the intersection of my circle in that horizontal line. So now if I zoom in, I have this. So I set the diameter of 0.75. So I need to make sure that in the options, I select diameter. And I'm going to type 0.75, like so. Okay. So now <clears throat> I know that at each quadrant, which are the highest points, so if I take the point tool and I snap in quad, just to show you, there's my first point, and if I use the point tool again, there's my second point. You don't need to place the point like I'm doing, because it's going to snap in quad automatically. I just want to show you that the quads are basically the highest point of your curve, and this is where your, your, your line, your straight line will start, and it will be tangent to this half circle okay so you'll see what i mean by that so i can snap in quad or in point doesn't matter and i'm just going to use the line tool just left click on it find the quad and i'm going to press shift and go all the way across like that okay so now i can draw another line or i can select this line select copy here and i'm going to grab this in quad and find the other quad like this and then, then i just right click so now it's just a matter of trimming so that I can eliminate everything that is inside those, this groove, basically. So I'm going to use the trim tool, select this curve and this curve as my cutting objects. And then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to select this curve and that curve. And then I'm going to right click to come out of the function. Now I need to trim again. So I'm going to click on trim, select my circle, the outer one or the bigger one right click and then left click left click to remove the straight lines that are going beyond that larger circle so now i can join so i click on join 
this curve, this curve, this curve, enter. So now I've got this nice uh, shape that is joined together. Okay, so it's an open curve and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six repetitions. So I need to use the array toolbar. So I'm going to go here where it says a rectangular array. I need to expand my toolbar and it's basically the second icon that's, that's called polar array. Left click on it, select your object, right click, center of the polar array. So you can snap in center or you can type in zero since I position everything at the origin of my grid. Okay, it's up to you. So I'm going to type in zero, right click. So if I remove the grid, there's my point. That's my, the center of my array. How many items? I want six. Right click and angle to fill. So I know that I want on 360 degrees. So I just make sure that this between brackets says 360, which is the case. So I just right click again and I've got my little preview here. So I don't need to adjust or increase the number of items in this. It's fine the way it is. So I just right click again and I freeze everything. So now it's just a matter of I'm going to select everything. I'm going to click on trim and I'm just going to trim these lines like that. And then once you're done, you just right click again and then you deselect by left clicking into the environment. So I've got the shape and I can select everything together and I'm going to click on join. There you go. So I've got these two points that I want to hide so I can always go in my selection filter, expand the toolbar, find the select points icon, left click on that, they're selected and I'm just going to click on the hide object where the light bulb icon is and there you have it. Okay. And then there's another circle of diameter 1.5. So I'm going to use the circle tool again, type in zero, right click, and then make sure that it's, you see the symbol that means diameter. So I need to make sure that I'm diameter, which is the case. I just need to type 1.5, right click, and there you have it. Okay. Simple as that. And again, you can select this close curve. So make sure that once you complete it, this is a closed curve, right? So I'm going to select this and it says indeed that it's a closed curve and I can select this one as well. Uh, and if I switch to the perspective view, since they're both closed curve I, and I know that it's perfectly planar because I worked on the XY plane, I can go in my surface from through a corner for four corner points and expand my surface creation toolbar, go and find my surface from planar curves icon here and you don't see much but I, I already have a telltale sign I can see that this line is bolder so something happened and obviously because I'm in, I'm in wireframe mode I need to switch to the shaded mode so I just right click on the perspective tab and find shaded and there's my surface so this surface obviously has no thickness so it's a trimmed surface and I just need to make it a solid so I'm going to go into my solid menu and like and like last time I just find the extrude surface and I'm just going to do a straight, straight up extrusion like so. And there you have it. Okay. So there's my nice solid. All right. So I invite you to try it out uh, on your own. I'm going to make obviously these images available for you to practice and I'll see you at the next video. Thank you.